another Saturday, another Today's Woman show coming to you from the studios of TV3 by courtesy of Anoa Lovely Baby Diapers and Queen's Pride Long Grain Perfumed Rice. No substitute. Today, I'm so happy to have the guest I have in the studio. She's somebody I've known since childhood. But in, in latter years, I've grown to admire a lot. She's the president's physician. But before I introduce her, your quote of the day. It's by Wangari Mathai. And it says, it's the little thing citizens do. That's what makes the difference. My little thing is planting trees. Welcome back to the Today's Woman Show. As always, you can join in the conversation by going to our Facebook page or following us on Twitter. Now, I did mention to you that my guest this morning is the president's physician. Now, this lady, she beat many odds. She's the youngest ever president's physician, and she's also a woman. What could be more and what could be better? But watch this, and then we'll introduce her. And I saw a trait in her, meticulous, open, and thorough. If I complain about anything, she would go about researching uh, where she thought I needed advice from, say, some experts or specialists. She would go and get that expert for me. You go for a very senior doctor, you cannot send him or her around to bring all these other experts on board. I, I, I found her to be the agency I needed to attend to anything. And I believe that's uh, what you should look for in a general practitioner or a, a family doctor. She did her work very well, excellently. For four years, she was the lead in charge of a team of medical officers who was responsible for the former president, J. A. Kufour's health. At the time, she was the mother of two young daughters. Dr. Bettina Ama Borhine Anda is the first woman to be called the president's physician. She was in charge from 2004 to 2008 and took over the reins from Dr. Buama Mensa. Naysayers claim that she was given the opportunity because her family and the Kufours were on good terms. But anyone who has witnessed Dr. Borhini Anda in action knows that these claims are unfounded. Dr. Borhini Anda is a qualified nutritionist with an MSc degree in clinical nutrition from the University of Roehampton in the United Kingdom. And due to the period she spent at Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Ridge Hospital and the Akai House Clinic, she has a wealth of experience in family practice and HIV medicine. She is the last of five children and was born to a consultant pediatrician and a home economist. Growing up in her parents' home, Dr. Boyhene Anda underwent decades of typical Presbyterian training and grooming, which she describes as a blessing. Her parents describe her as a loving and creative daughter, albeit a little bit mischievous. But as a child, it didn't indicate that she wanted to be a doctor, a medical doctor. But she, she was always interested in what other people or her colleagues were doing, and uh, she was very supportive. Uh, as for housework, I don't think that was a very strong point. But she was doing what she was told to do. Hmm. Um, as a child, I uh, was quite bright and perky and sometimes naughty. But she was so helpful. She would help anybody who needed help, uh, whether at home or at school. Playing with her friends when she was playing, she always wanted to be the doctor and the pupils, the teacher and the, you know, the doctor and the patients, the teacher and you know, the mother and the children. So you could see that she had this leadership quality that, you know, and then people you know, kind of gravitated towards her and she always was in leadership. As the mother of two, Dr. Boahini Anda is also proudly continuing the tradition with her daughters. She's a nice person, she, she relates to us really well, but then when you do something wrong, she'll really blast you and stuff like that. She believes in spare the child, spare the rod, not the child. So she canes, she canes 
when you when you're out of line when you step out of line she can cane you really badly and sometimes she can say very hurtful things but because she's very angry so by the time me and my sister say we won't talk to her and we will get really mad as her and sometimes she will tell them go and ask your grandmother go and ask her what we went through if you go through half of that you will then know what a presbyterian training is and i think it's helping her a lot as a mother in spite of the suddenness of Dr. Boahine Anders' call to this esteemed position, her family were not surprised when they saw her excel at it. It wasn't an appointment which was formal. In other words, there wasn't an advertisement for people to apply. But she was noticed in her work at the Ridge Hospital by the president himself. I was, I was taken aback, but I was, I was excited. I said, oh, it's an opportunity. Most doctors, right, would jump, would, 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 would love to, to, to have. I didn't have any doubt that this was an opportunity she had to make do because I saw it as national service. And uh, I thought, if she is looking after the president, she will be able to tell him exactly what she should do and see to it that he does it. So in that vein, I was quite happy. As I said, she's intelligent, she's passionate, and she's compassionate. Those two qualities are very important for somebody who's a medical person. And then commit commitment to the, the, the work medicine is uh, it's, uh, something that you should have. You should have the calling. It's like being a pastor. You know, so when she got there, those are the two things I think. Well, I'm a hazard when it comes to qualities, but the other issue is being in the forefront and in politics and all that, it made me a bit anxious. But I was very, very proud that at her age she could do that. All we knew was that when she was, while she was doing it, she would do it well, to the best of her, her, her ability. And so we all just supported her. During the four years she was President Kufour's physician, she accompanied him on many trips across Ghana and the globe. She was privileged to meet Otumfor Osetutu II and Queen Elizabeth II, as well as other very influential heads of state, royals, government officials, and great academicians. Even though it's been six years since she was relieved of her position, Dr. Bohini Anders' husband and children still remember how it was like for them during this time period. Considering the fact that there were little ones involved, we had two little daughters then, you know. I was just straight away thinking about how one was going to manage the situation. The times when she would travel to do different, go around the different countries, it was very hard for me because I, I was very young. So for her to not be there for me was very hard. Yeah, when she traveled, she used to call us every evening, like twice a day. When you come back from school, she's called. When you're about to sleep, she calls. So it, was, it, was, it wasn't normal, but then... In terms of real definition in the household, she's a professional just like me, so I don't fret. Oh, where's the food and stuff? No, 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 no. You make do with what is available because she has a, an even tighter schedule than you do. So it's very important to reassess the dynamic in terms of man-woman relationship in the African context, so to speak. Dr. Boahene Anda has written and published a memoir chronicling that period of her life, and she's the first physician to do so. She is currently the medical director of Brainwave Consult Limited, which consists of a clinic and a laboratory. I'm very happy to introduce to you Dr. Mrs. or Mrs. Doctor, which one the Nigerians do it, is Dr. Mrs. Bettina Amakwachwa Bohini Anda. I got it all in there. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Roger. Now, why, why were you laughing when you saw your kids? Um, you know, I was amazed at the kinds of things that they said for me. But that's that's really me. I mean, I would have been surprised if they had said, you know, mommy will just look at you and and have a laugh when you're doing something mm. naughty mm. you know so what they said was entirely true it was entirely true. yeah yeah you know kids are yeah, they're, they're very honest they're very honest and very blatant mm. which mm. is a good thing mm. that's mm. the way we were brought up so yeah. yeah but you know i i'd like to think that you're the most famous president's physician and probably that's arisen because of the fact that you were young 
you're a woman and also because you came out with a book because nobody's really written about their time in the off I I in looking after a president have they now no i mean the female aspect was 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 very was very much in the in, in the front of my mind mm. because i said to myself how many women um, have had the opportunity worldwide. It's not only about Africa yeah, or, or Ghana, Ghana, for that matter. You know, there are not many. We travel to a lot of countries, and every time we got there, we'll identify with each other. For example, all uh, physicians to heads of state will congregate, mm -hmm. and almost inevitably, there were, they were men. All men. So, uh, on a couple of occasions, I think two occasions, uh, um, President Mugabe's uh, physician is a woman, oh. but a much older woman. Okay. And then in Italy as well, uh, the head of state at the time had a woman as his physician. Didn't it, was it refreshing young. to find that it you was, had it a was, female colleague? Know, it was, but then it, it also brought to brought to the fore the fact that there were not many. Mm. And so when you saw it, instead of it being the norm, mm. it was rather the exception, mm. you know. Mm. So after all of this, I said to myself, I can't let this go. And Professor Pobi, may he so rest in peace, one of my mentors, um, kept telling me, that I must catalog events, you know, during the pr the Your pr time my as time a as a physician, physician. Mm. and then in the end write a book. So when it was all said and done, I decided to put it together and see, you know, um, what but comes it, it, it's out aptly it. called the president's physician. But I like the bit that you add bumps on a smooth road. Why why do you why do you add that bit? Well, I mean, when you hear the president's physician, everybody assumes that it was a very cushy, cushy job. Mm. I mean, they think, oh, well, you know, you went everywhere with the president and you slept in all these fancy hotels. But you did. And yes, I did, Audrey. <laughs> but that, that was the smooth bits. Trust so me, the bumpy, the bumpy bits. bits comes. For example, you heard what my children said. Mm. Very emotionally draining. Mm. Having to leave two little children uh, with my husband is very supportive. But it was tough. Mm. Apart from that, being a woman amongst many men, President always said to them, especially the security personnel, that you must look out for her. But they just obviously so you were just thought one of I was guys. just one of the guys. Yeah. So there were times where, you know, uh, physically things were very exhausting. Was I it mean, lonely? It was lonely. I mean, they were lucky sometimes to share a room mm -hmm. when we go on these trips. But you and of course, I couldn't share a room yeah. with them. So you're in your room and you're thinking, oh, what's happening back home? And apart from that, physically, because the man I served mm -hmm. or the, my patient, if I dare say, <laughs> he was my patient, is a, is a very, you know, he has a lot of strength, physical strength. Mm -hmm in tenacity or purpose he intends to do something and he goes ahead with it mm. so in one trip we can go to say four different or five different towns mm -hmm. all in one day mm -hmm. and you're thinking i mean by the time you get to the third one you're exhausted i read about when you were in kumasi and you had to do funerals yes you i know? mean that was one thing Ghanaians always spoke about with regards to president kufour that he would go to any funeral you know that he heard about and that's a strong point. He's a people's person. And therefore, we all had to go along with it. Mm. You know, so the guys would eat their kinke and uh, fufu in the morning. And you a, wanted What tea. they call, you know, yeah, I wanted a little bit of David. <laughs> I'm Presbyterian. Uh, my parents are British trained. What do you expect? No, but really, I'll have some tea and some bread. And by midday, extremely hungry. hungry. Mm -hmm. So I learned really quickly mm. that I needed to have some you know, Kenke, at least in the morning, as what we call the foundation. To line so the that belly. I'm telling you, so that if he didn't stop to eat, mm -hmm. you know, but physically it was exhausting, emotionally draining, and Ghanaians expected a lot from me. Being his physician, men, then, the moment he was awake, you were at his beck and call. You Pretty much. I mean, it depends, because he's very considerate, I must mm -hmm. say. So he waits until it's absolutely necessary. And he'll call me, you know, if he needed to call me in the wee hours of the morning. But that was not very, it was quite rare. Okay. Pretty much, it was a 24-7 job. Okay. I mean, when I was sleeping, my phone was on. And um, I could be called any time to do anything mm. for, for, for him. So it, it was pretty hectic. But during those years, you wore this really short hairstyle. Was that meant to help you blend amongst the men? I'm not so sure. It was more of one of convenience. Mm. I mean, Audrey, you know women, you never want your hair to look bad and, and, and you know, 
a look look uh, and kept mm -hmm. so um the shelter was great because all i needed to do i'm probably it's gonna wash and I'm wear going to go back it? to it i think oh really you know this just take a brush. i don't know about that audrey <laughs> you know just take a brush and you're gone mm -hmm. and so it was very convenient and i think it gave me that you know how people see you a woman with short hair mm -hmm. And they immediately assume that she's tough and you know exactly. so maybe I, yeah. I won because I, I gave them the impression that <laughs> no no yeah, exactly I could go along with it. Where whereas sometimes I'd cry in my little corner and think, you know, is this really the thing for me? Now let's talk about the man who you served mm -hmm. and and you were honored enough to have him give you a message in the in your book. It wasn't the forward, but it was a message from mm -hmm. him. And I want to read that and it says, Amma is a natural chronicler with easy flow of language and must and a masterful eye for detail. These att attributes make her a social team player. Now, what, what exactly are these attributes that you think he saw in you? Well, um, he, obviously, anybody who knows him knows that he, he loves to chat. Mm -hmm. And he will engage you anytime on any topic, mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. and I hope uh, he'll watch the show, though, while he's watching you. Yeah, show. well, I'm sure he will. <laughs> and uh, what it is is that uh, he would ask my opinion um, on several issues, not only medicine. And I think he probably thought I, I was able to match up to his uh, intellect. You know, intellect to mm. some extent. Well, not match up. I'm almost there. But mm. you know, President Kufuor is in that class. Absolutely engage each other, each engage other. Each other yeah. in conversation. Yeah. So uh, we got along very well. And uh, he would always ask my opinion, or most of the time, ask my opinion on certain issues, mm. because he knew that I try to pay attention to detail mm. i mean we got into a place and i thought the chair was too low or too high or not very good for his back or you know by the time oh, we walked in, welfare yeah i mean i i made sure that uh, not only with him but even with other members of the team mm. so i think he he, he noticed that attribute yes. and it came as a, uh, a pleasant surprise when he wrote that message mm. and he put that I mean that was the beginning yeah. he wrote every single word there himself and that's typical wow. of him wow. he won't let anybody write a speech and but he, he even says that rewrite it having you writing this book has inspired him to put his own memoirs yes on well we are well. hoping it should come you know because he has a great story to tell and mm. I think we are babies when it comes of to course. what he has achieved and what he continues to achieve mm. now what was he like as a person? I mean, we see him. Of course, he's very affable. Comes the course, a warm man. But he's a giant of a man. And, you know, for any woman, it's sometimes quite intimidating. How did you overcome that? To actually be his physician and tell him, look, you've got to sit there. You've got to take medication. Yeah. You've got to do this. Initially, it was a little, like you said, I mean, he has this charisma and he has something about him that makes you feel like oh no i really i better not say this <laughs> but then very quickly mm. i overcome that because i realized that i know he's going to be upset with me for saying this but i realized that you know he knows that he has those attributes and therefore if you're not careful if you know you have certain attributes you definitely exploit them mm. it's not negative mm. But then, you know, you try and ask him a question with regards to, have you done this? And then he has this very stern, you know, looking face and says, no, I haven't. Mm -hmm. And then a few times I felt a little intimidated, but I said, no, I have to get through. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'd say, yes, you haven't done it, but you must. Mm -hmm. So uh, one time I remember, and this is just, you know, funny. He said to my dad, because he's good friends with my dad. And he said to him. This woman, I just don't even know. No, it's actually said this girl. I don't know why I asked her to look after me. You know, she's just too much and she tells me what to do. And my father said, well, I mean, would you rather somebody who will just sit around and let you do what you're not supposed to do and then end up in trouble? He wanted you to so, cut him some slack. No, well, I mean, Audrey, with medicine, if you do that, you're going to sure. have a lot of problems on your hands. Sure. And uh, I was looking at it not only from his point of view, but Ghana as a whole. Um, his family, everybody was looking up to me to make sure that, um, that of course, God had the ultimate say, responsibility. but um, I, I, I did my part. That was a huge responsibility. Absolutely. Huge. Right from day one. I mean, I know that, of course, that your strengths came from God because you're a very spiritual person. Um, and we have a message from your, your spiritual mentor, so mm. to speak, Dr. Lawrence. Tama is somebody who really loves God and fears God. You know, we, we come across people both the young and old, both men and women. And there are people you come across that you, you see their moral standing, they are believing the things of God and the way they want to relate. 
And apart from the father, she was privileged to have a father who is a professor and a mother who is an intellectual and had come from a very blessed home. She's very humble and God-fearing. She was ready to be taught. She was ready to be guided. She was ready to listen to the voice of God. Um, we've come across many people who want to have it their own way. You know, the Bible said the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. Amma has a lot of wisdom. She's not just an ordinary medical doctor. She fears God. I've, I've had instances where something has happened to my mother, my parents, or somebody in my family. And the way Amma can get through it. In fact, Amma talked my mother out of Chinese medicine. Now, this, this is a very sensitive one. My mom had people to speak to her about how good acupuncture Chinese medicine is. In five minutes, my mom has responded. And by the time I realized Amma was in my mother's bedroom, the bedroom that we go by permission, Amma is seated in my mother's bedroom. Auntie Julie is a hardcore. And anybody who knows my mother, knows my mother is a su, a su woman, typical woman who, after 70 years and about almost 80 years, she still wants to look like 50, 60, and she's, she's set in her own ways. She has children who are intellectuals. We couldn't penetrate to my mother to stop her from using that aspect of medications. But Abba was able to speak to her. So she, she has a gift. She has a natural calling and a gift. I think that, but for the fact that I was proud of her, I will not be waiting here and be on this program. I'm thankful to God for her life. I thank God for bringing people like Dr. Bettina, Amma Bohinanda, our way. I'm very proud of her. I'm proud of her achievements. I'm not ashamed at all to associate myself with her and to be associated with her. I'm happy to endorse her to any man, any woman, anywhere. And I'll say this anywhere at all. And so anytime Amma has come to thank me for some advice I gave her or for something I've said about her, I've always told her that success as many fathers and failure is an orphan. And if you are listening to me, Dr. Amma, I want to say, Dr. Akito, God bless you. you know, we have a lot of nicknames for her <laughs> because Amma is very strict. If you know that about her, it's very strict. If, if she is your physician, trust me, I know she does it to anybody and everybody. And she does it to all of us. When you're, she's coming you on your guard. Because when she tells you things to do, and you don't do it the way she wants you to do it, she will come after you. But I want to say congratulations. And I want to thank God even for such a gift to us as a nation in Ghana. How do you feel hearing that? Well, um... Oh, you said it to you many times. So it's like... Well, it's, it's, it's moving. You know, Pastor... Is very, he has said a lot here, but uh, he doesn't say much to me. So, you know, he says it sometimes. He would say, I'm, I'm really proud of you. I think you're doing well. But this this one is, is, is very moving. And I'm glad that uh, I'm making an impact in his life and that of his family. I'm I need to know to you him. more professionally because, I mean, the Amma I know is always smiling, <laughs> laughing, joking, fun, fun Amma. I need to know that professional yes, Amma, yes, you know. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, but we have to go for a commercial break, Amma. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to the Today's Woman Show. I'd like to acknowledge our sponsors, Anoa Baby Lovely Diapers, and also um, Queen's Pride Long Grain Perfumed Rice. And it says, no substitute. Well, for those who've joined us, I'm talking to Dr. Ama Bettina. Well, it's the other way, Dr. Bettina Ama Bohini Anda. And she used to be the president's physician, and she's an author. You used to be, you're a doctor, physician. Mm -hmm. You're an author. You used to be a dress designer. You have so many things. There's so many aspects to Amma. Well, Audrey, I mean, I believe that uh, you have certain things that you are a calling. Mm. I, I believe medicine for me is a calling. Okay. And I love what I do. Mm. But there are other things, too, that you, 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 you just enjoy doing. Now, coming to today in your life, you're doing brainwave consult post being the president's physician. Mm -hmm. What's that like? 
it's it's exciting i mean entrepreneurship is always a good thing i would say however Fraught it's with very its own problems. absolutely i mean challenges mm. here and there mm. um well, it's a problems, lab challenges here. yeah um it, there's a lab there's a consulting room there's the diagnostics and as you can imagine i mean it's very capital intensive you have to make sure that you're constantly there as much as possible, which is hard for me. Mm -hmm. And you also have to make sure that uh, you're delivering a certain kind of service. Mm -hmm. The reason I went into Brainwave Consult is that I realized that there was a gap. What happens is um, people are sitting in their offices with a cough, sore throat, cold. And to go and sit in a clinic in queue to be able to see the doctor. It's hard for them. Mm -hmm. So they'll rather self-medicate. Mm -hmm. However, what I do now is take medicine to the doorstep of the individual. I do what I call house calls. Okay. So a lot of my patients, there are specific days of the week that I don't do. Uh, I don't go to the clinic. I rather consult. go to 